as I approached my mid-twenties, my parents had started to nag at me. When are you going to get married? I want to see my grandchild before I die. Is it just an Asian parent thing? I'm not in a rush to find my soulmate, but there's a group of people out there who just can't because society has deemed them to be undesirable. We're talking about bear brunches who live in rural China. Bear what, you ask? A bear brunch or guangkun is a derogatory term for single Chinese men in their late 20s who are unable to fulfill patriarchal roles in extending their family tree. So if you're young, single, living in China and maybe a bit desperate, well, sucks to be you. Not to fear though, modern problems require modern solutions. Introducing marriage markets where overly concerned parents try to find love for their single children. They post signs on sidewalks with things like their child's education level, wealth and even physical attributes, all in grand hopes of lending their son or daughter a potentially decent spouse. Well, I guess from this, you kind of realize that your societal worth boils down to these things. How rich you are, the place you live, and at times, even how you look. Bear branches fail on all these aspects, so the odds are definitely stacked against them. But there's a deeper reason for this phenomenon. To understand why, let's jump back in time a bit. Between 1980 and 2015, married couples in China could only have one child. If you broke this rule, you'd be fined, forced to abort the child and even risk losing your job. With the traditional preference for sons, countless daughters were aborted, left unreported or even abandoned, leading to a great gender imbalance in China. Today, the world gender ratio is about 102 men for every 100 women. But in China, it's 114 men, or 30 million more men than women in total. Going back to the issue of marriage, there just aren't enough brides for grooms, let alone these bare branches. But somewhere along the way, someone had an idea. Just buy a bride! You wonder, how much can a bride actually cost? The answer? 38,000 US dollars. That's five times the annual salary of a villager on the outskirts of Beijing. The sellers even had to implement a price cap on brides. And if you couldn't pay up, you could always give gifts or even a house. Honestly, the ones who profit from this are just parents with daughters. Think about it. When supply drops, demand gets higher. Well, good for them, I guess. Liang, a pear farmer from Tan Liu says, Do you actually want the best for your daughter or just the most money? And what about actual bride trafficking from neighboring countries? Brides from North Korea, Cambodia, and Myanmar are being sold to poorer bear branches, usually against their will. This last resort in hopes of getting married is downright illegal and is still an ongoing issue today. So what do you think this crisis traces back to? Yup, you guessed it, that traditional preference for sons. But another possible reason is this. In 1958, Hukou, a household registration system, was implemented in China to maintain some sort of social order. It divided the urban and rural areas. The rich got richer and the poor got poorer, unless they found a way out of this vicious cycle. Many bear branches come from these rural areas, where most women leave for bigger cities to get hitched to richer men, all in hopes of a better life. And they say money doesn't bring happiness. Hypergamy, or the belief of marrying into a higher social status, still exists in this day and age. And that leaves these bare branches behind, isolated from society. Therese Hesketh, a UCL professor, ran a study on bare branches and discovered this. In rural areas, men who don't get married are really marginalized. Even socializing in the village is difficult. In a nutshell, these guys are lonely because they lack societal support and companionship. Li Weipin, a 30-year-old bachelor who resides in Tongquan, a city in the Guangdong province, has never had a girlfriend, 
Although he has always wanted one. I want to find a girlfriend, but I don't have money or chance. The girl's demand is too high. I need a car, I need a house. They don't want to talk to me. Lee lives in a stuffy dorm room with five other men. He spends his spare time playing games on his phone, and needless to say, he can't find a companion. It's a painful reality. These bear branches sometimes go out to work in cities and are faced with a life they can only dream of. It's a constant spiral of shame, emasculation, and rejection from women. But not all hope is lost. In 2021, Chinese researcher Wu Xiuming had an idea. Yeah, sounds easy in theory, but these are people we're dealing with. Not mass equations, but people. And people have autonomy. What Wu forgot to consider is how the public feels about this, and ooh, they weren't the happiest. Well, can't fault the man for trying. And while we're trying to make sense of this all, let's not forget that leftover women in China are leaving their male counterparts in the dust. By studying more and reaching a higher economic status, they solidify their place in society, challenging the traditions of marrying young. Hmm, maybe it is possible to stay single, yet still have a very fulfilled life. On the other hand, I'm not sure if I can say the same for bare branches. The sad thing is, they're still living in seclusion, even today. Which makes me wonder, is it their fault? Or are they just victims of a problem society created? Could there be another way out? How about you? What do you think? <laughs>